Hi, thanks for joining me again. My name is Liesl and today I'm going to talk you through a very basic like impressionist abstract still life. We're going to use these happy ranunculus that I've got right behind me because it's springtime and it's glorious weather outside. So let's get to it. When first we off with the still life, you want to keep a pretty clean background. So no clutter. As you get more advanced, you can start adding parts to it. You, know, you can have like a ball of twine, maybe another plant shows up. But for right now, we want to keep this nice and clear. Go away, fern. Now, like I said, we're going to go in pretty impressionistic. I have a small canvas here today, and I've already prepped one. So this is a nice uh, 8x10 size there. And I want to keep it impressionistic. I'm going to go more abstract. So even though this background here is pretty white and gray, I went ahead and added a little blue to mine. Now, my view is a little bit different from your view. So I'm going to show you a little clip of what I'm looking at. Now, as you can see, I'm just going in for like a really zoomed in perspective. I'm not going to worry too much about the vase today. We're just thinking about these nice, happy, bright flowers. And again, we're doing this pretty quickly. So we're going to think about it really loose. We're going more Van Gogh and Monet and less like we're taking a picture. I'm using a half inch brush today and that's going to get me through this whole painting. I'm going to keep it pretty easy peasy here. I also like a little rosé when I'm painting flowers, keeps me in that nice little happy springtime mood. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and paint in my flowers themselves. And I'm going to mix a little bit of a light orange. Orange is a little bit of that white to keep it light, yellow, and a boop of red. There's a lot of petals in here, so if you have a flower that's like a ranunculus, or if you're using a rose or a peony, they stack together very tightly. So the best way we can do it is kind of start in the middle and layer ourselves out. Again, keeping it mushy because we're keeping it abstract. Now, as I go through, I can see that I have some flowers that are a little bit lighter and some flowers that are a little bit darker. So I'm gonna go in and add a little bit more red to my orange. You can even use that red to go in and put in shadows. And I'm keeping those overlapping layers in those swirling motions of the petals. Now, as you can see, as I go through it, I've got my paint kind of half mixed. What that does is keep everything a little variegated. So as I paint, it adds more texture as I go, rather than having to go back in and do it by itself. For the flowers that are further away from me, I can just kind of have some blobs kind of hang out in the background. I don't have to fully form a flower that I don't want to put as much detail in. For the little buds that haven't quite opened, we just take the corner of our brush and just blob in a shape for where those buds will live. So while I let my flowers dry before I put more detail into them, I'm going to go in and lay in the base of our stems and leaves. High production value here. Now I'm going to start with some darker greens. So I've got green, a little bit of blue, and a little bit of purple. Again, impressionistic, so it can be kind of mushy, not even fully mixed. Paint on my brush. And what we're gonna do is just kinda come in and add a lot of stems. Where I want little stems, I'll do thin lines. And where I want big leaves, I'll push down more on my brush. Now because this is impressionistic, when we do our little stems, we can just do little bits that don't necessarily have to connect exactly to the flowers. We can just kinda have the idea of a little stem. As I come in and do leaves, again, keeping them very loose. So I'll do a line and then a couple little dashes to make that leafy texture. If you get tired of filling in stems, you can just kind of come in and put a couple little dashes of that green all around. And that can give you a nice fill without having to worry about each individual stem. I'll add some extra stems coming off the side of my canvas to make it feel like I've got some nice little texture in there. 
Maybe there's some things that we can't quite see in our canvas view. Ooh, look, we've got a little ant that can decided to come say hello. It's because I brought those flowers in from outside. Hey, little buddy. There he goes. Now, I also have a few buds that haven't even shown their petals yet. So I'm going to add a little extra purple to my brush and come in and just do little pops of purple that maybe represent some little unopened buds. Also, the fact that this is impressionistic means that we can play around with more color. So I want to play around with a bit more color and I'm going to add a little red to my brush and bring that in and layer it over my stems as well. Remember, as I go through this, I'm playing around with different pressures on my brush. Sometimes I'll push down hard and sometimes then I'll push very light, depending on whether I want a large brush stroke or a little brush stroke. We can come in with some regular green for accents. You can even bring a little bit of yellow in if you want a little brightness in parts of your greenery. We got a good first layer in there. So we have our first layer in our nice happy still life of flowers here. I want to make sure that this is nice and dry before we add any highlights because we want the paint to be dry. If it's wet, it'll blend in rather than pop on top. So while I let that dry, I'm going to drink a little bit more of my rosé. So now that our paint is mostly dry on that canvas, I'm going to come in with just a little bit of paint at a time. So you can see there's a little bit of red on my brush and at sharper angles here. So I'm going side to side. I'm just going to come in and put little accents kind of towards the base of the flowers where those petals would be opening. And you can see I'm sort of twisting my brush as I go to keep up with that sort of swirly pattern of our petals. When I'm in the areas of flowers that are opening up more, I'll just put a little bit below. Now because this is an impressionist painting, if you want to add accents like purple, you could take a little purple on your brush and smush it a little purple in some places. So we've got most of our colors in here. Once again, I want to let my flowers dry a little bit before we put those last highlights in because I don't want to let it mush. We want to have them really bright and happy on top. So I'm going to go ahead and come back in and add a little bit more green back in my stem area and my leaf area. Remember, like I said, I like to jump back and forth with my paintings here. So we've got our shadows in. We're going to go in and put in some more little detail in our leaves. Now, as you can see, I like adding a lot of color into my base. I like having that blue in there. It's a good contrast and adds a little bit more life to my painting. I also like adding a little bit of these leaves that kind of dance above our flower line. I feel like it brings a little bit more happiness and energy into my paintings. When you're all done with your green, make sure you've got a nice, clean brush. I'm going to go in and add my little highlights around my flowers in here. So we're going to go in with a nice light yellow. You can have a little bit of orange in there if we want to. If you still have orange left from your pile before, just take a little bit of white and add it to the side. And that can give you a nice little range of some color to work with. Now that looks a little soft to me, so I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to it. and brighten it up a little bit. And we're gonna do the same thing of adding those nice little swirly motions, starting from the inside and working out. And I'm just doing a little bit at a time. Now maybe some flowers get some of this and maybe some don't. Depends on how bright you want them to be. You can also come in with some just yellow or add a little bit more yellow to your piles if you want to add some more brightness to your flowers. Remember, we're painting the idea of a flower rather than the actual flower itself. Sometimes I like to just go ahead and add a little white in there just to bring a little extra highlight if you want to, or you can kind of blend it in and around. 
just to bring a little bit of life in some of those flowers that are right up front. If you have a little bit of highlight on the leaves that are falling open. And you can see that these colors are kind of blending together a little bit. That is okay. We want a little bit of that mushiness to happen. That really helps lend itself to an impressionist painting. Now in any painting, it's good to know when to stop, so sometimes you just gotta put that brush down and take a step away. Especially when we're doing a more impressionistic or abstract painting, we're not trying to paint the thing itself, we're just trying to get the idea of it down. I really am happy with my colors that I have here. I think it's turned out quite nice, and so I'm gonna call it good. The last thing that you can do is sign it and claim it and hang it up on your wall. Now that's the side-by-side -side of mine. See, you can see I kept it pretty loose. I made a couple changes on my own, decided where I wanted to put some flowers or maybe leave some flowers out. So I just really wanted to capture the idea and the energy of the cute little ranunculuses. Thank you again for painting with me. I would love to see all of your finished paintings. So when you do finish, if you feel like posting on any of the socials, uh, feel free to tag us. We're on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, feel free to find that information in our video descriptions below or to the side or whatever platform you're watching it on. Uh, and I look forward to painting with you again.